All right, the last step is to do the uh, guided bend test. We want to make sure that these plates are free of spatter. Uh, any spatter that's on these plates will roll over these rollers. These pieces are not fixed. They actually rotate, they roll. In fact, they'll come out completely. Uh, they're just sitting in there. So we don't want to damage those with spatter. So everything should be cleaned up. The plate should be free of spatter all the way across. The center should be nice and smooth. The back, again, should be nice and smooth. This one is going to be my root. I'm going to put this in, again, root down. Now this one I've labeled on the outside. This will roll over the grease. You'll see this will be hard to read, the R when I'm done. The other one I labeled on the same side, but it'll actually be face uh, down, and that F, the letter F right here, if I can get it on camera, will, uh, this is harder than it looks, folks. The F right here will actually end up being uh, on the inside of the bend, so it'll be easy to read. But we do need to identify which one is which, okay? So again, this one will go in root down. So there's the root, uh, always the, the uh, outside of the curve, if you will, uh, or the convex uh, side. And I'm going to place that in here. I'm going to get it in the center of the span. I don't want it all the way to the back. I don't want it all the way to the front. I want it in the middle. And basically what I want is I want the center of that point, the highest point, lined up with this peg. Now this operates just like the regular bend test machine. It's just a hydraulic jack. I'm going to tighten the knob down. I know you can't see that off camera, but then I'm going to simply crank this up by hand initially. I'm going to check the alignment. I'm going to make sure this floats a little bit. This can go backward and forward. I'm going to make sure that this guide roll is not hitting the front or the back. Uh, we had a kid a couple years ago, last year in fact, uh, put in a piece of material sideways and sheared through it. And you can actually see these uh, lines right here. That is where the paint flaked off from tremendous, tremendous stress. Uh, that is actually stress lines in the steel where the paint flew off because this was buckled and bulged because an idiot decided to go ahead and put a piece of material in there sideways, okay? This is a 35 ton jack, 70,000 pounds. If this thing breaks, it will kill you. So don't be stupid, all right? Again, double check your alignment. I'm going to jack this up, make sure that the roller is contacting at the highest point of the hump. It should be in the center of the plate. This is seven inches long, roughly. Uh, it's about the same length of the plate when it's uh, overall cut, although the lengths vary because some are practice, some are full plates. But again, I can see that it's even on both ends, so I know it's in the center. And I'm going to verify the location of the bend by seeing where the roller touches off. Now once the roller touches off, and it has now, I have to use the uh, arm here to jack this. And I'm going to stand off to the side, and I'm going to pump this, okay? So I'm over here, okay? I'm standing out of the way. I'm not standing right in front of this. And I'm pumps to get the whole thing to pass through on a real test plate it takes quite a few and there it goes pop it's out okay now once that's out I, I can't remove it just yet I'm going to back off the adjustments <coughs> on the bottom again I'll show you uh, just a couple turns so there's one two no more than three otherwise this will come out and oil will shoot all over the place <coughs> I'm going to bring it back up here these are specifically designed to pry this back down. So I put this under here, I'm pushing up on my end of the bar, I know it's off camera. That'll push that down, put it under again, and again, I can drive this all the way down. Put this uh, in the holder, and now I can retrieve the bend specimen. Okay. So again, this was the first one. It's got a little bit of oil on it, I'm gonna set it up to the side but we can see uh, visually that it is clear, okay? So this was the R, there's the R on the inside, this was the root bend, so I passed the root. That means I weaved quickly enough and I got a good uh, bend, excuse me, good bond on my root pass. Now this one's the face bend, the face has to be down. Again, the face is always the part that flares up, concave, so I'm gonna flip it, 
Again, place it in the center. You know, it just occurred to me, I put the other one in backwards. I'm gonna flip this one over. This will be at the low point. I did these backwards, folks. Live TV, you can't win it. Uh, again, if, if, if one is bowed up, the other one has to be bowed down, so these are backwards. Um, better luck next time. But this is what you get late on a Sunday afternoon. So I get, I get this tightened down, I'm gonna bring this up. So I just gotta remember that the root and face are actually labeled wrong. All right, folks, the uh, test is done. These are the, the bend test. Again, I labeled them root and face. I got them backwards. I bet the first one wrong. Wasn't paying attention. Uh, it is important to pay attention. Obviously, I'm trying to record and do everything at the same time, so that's my excuse, so that's what I'm going with. But basically, what we're looking at is we're looking at two assemblies that passed. Um, there's no visible defects on the edges, okay? Either one of these plates, there's no visible defects in the middle. You won't see anything on the inside unless it's extraordinarily bad. Um, I've got some samples of uh, tests that students did last year that I'll show you, uh, some good, some bad. I can say that the absolute best plate that uh, came out, which was uh, spectacular, was done by uh, Madison Thompson from Lincoln Academy, go Maddie. Um, it was absolutely unbelievable. And uh, other students that uh, actually, you know, we're in the program uh, that are doing very, very well welding, did not do well on this first test. So if your first test doesn't come out good, uh, don't worry about it. This is not a test per se. The reason we're doing this is so you can understand the testing process. And also we're gonna introduce the concept of really multi-pass work. Right now we've been doing mostly single pass fillet welds. We've done a little multi-pass welds on the horizontal. But we're going to do a V block. We're going to take a, two plates. We're going to tack them into a V. We're going to MIG weld the uh, corner. I'll set those up for you folks, uh, show you how to get them started. And uh, we're going to start by just filling in that V on the flat. We won't fill them 100%, but we will spend a couple of days in the booth just running beads in that plate. We've got to get used to laying weld over weld over weld over weld. Okay? And that's essentially all this is. If this was a one inch thick, limited thickness plate, the only difference would be we'd have more passes, okay? Uh, at Bath Ironworks, I've seen up to four and a half inch thick steel welded, um, but there's some unbelievable thick material out there. The Iowa class battleships, for example, uh, the gun turrets were 19 inches thick, and the uh, Yokohama, I believe it was, class battleships for Japan, uh, well, they might have been Yoshimoto, I'd have to look it up. Anyway, they were 26 inches thick. Uh, by the way, our 16-inch guns blew a hole clean through it. So, uh, go America. America.